Hey y'all, it's Laura back with another Cocoa Vanilla Studio video, and this time we're using a lovely circle template that I have created using a bowl in my house and a bit of chipboard, and it is a 10 inch circle. And I'm just gonna use that as a template to go ahead and make a star circle, so a cluster of stars into a circle shape for these five photos. <laughs> <laughs> now I do really enjoy a multiple photo moment and so I do try to squeeze on quite as many photos as I can to one layout partially because I have an overabundance of albums in my house already and I don't want to continue to overfill them the way I have been and so by getting multiple photos onto one layout we're taking up less space in those albums and uh, making them a little less crowded so that I have to have two albums per year instead of just one. So this is one of my solutions. I'm going to be playing with these stars from the new Coco Vanilla collection, Great Escape, and we're going to build ourselves a circle. Now what I always do when I start any kind of scattered background using a lot of little pieces is I start with the larger pieces first and get them into place and then I move down to the smaller pieces to fill in the gaps. I find that's just the easiest way to do it. Now initially I was thinking to put all of the photos in the center of the circle because it's quite large. I thought I could get away with it and I probably could have but on further reflection I do decide to break up the groups of photos so that they aren't overtaking the center of this circle and uh, can give the larger photo a little bit more attention. So what I'm going to end up doing is on the top left corner of the circle and the bottom right corner, the circles don't have corners, the top left corner of the paper and the bottom right corner of the paper, I'm going to put clusters of two smaller photos and then put the larger photo in the middle. And that way it allows it to have a little bit more presence on the page. And uh, those smaller photos can be enjoyed as well without overwhelming the page with that one just big grouping of photos. See, I was thinking I was going to kind of create columns of photos in the center, but on further reflection, I just felt like it was a bit much. And so I went ahead and split them up and put two together at the top left, two together at the top right, and just kind of shift my stars around a little bit. Now I will go back and glue down all of those stars off camera because it's a pretty fiddly process, but I do like to give myself at least an idea of how it's going to look by kind of presetting the stars and just sort of getting the sizes where I want them and the colors roughly where I want them. Cause you'll notice I've tried to spin out all of the colors into different areas onto that circle. So we've got bits of yellow here and there and everywhere, and they're not the same colors stacked on top of each other. I try to split them up as much as I can. I did find a very small little cut apart piece from the A5 paper stack that was perfect for the journaling on this one. Now these photos are pretty simple. Uh, my sons had gone to an amusement park. I think it was the Delta State Fair at the Agri Center when we lived in the Memphis area. And they had taken some really fun photos of my youngest son, Joseph. And so I thought it would be really fun to add this to his album of his little day of fun. They had met up with some of his friends. And uh, for some reason, he's the only one in the photos. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. I think he and my oldest son, Alex, may have kind of wandered off from the friend group at one point and just gone and, and ridden a, bu a bunch of rides together. And Alex had taken the photos for me. Uh, that is something that I have been training my children to do is to when they're out, when they're with their friends, especially to go ahead and take some photos for me. And they're very good about it. I just have to remember to have them send me the photos, but it's really nice to kind of get them in that sort of routine of taking photos for me and sending them to me because then when they get older and they do move out, hopefully they will continue to send photos to me so that I can keep up with what's going on in their lives and uh, keep scrapbooking their fun adventures in the world. And uh, so this is one of those layouts that's just kind of a fun event and I decided to really celebrate it with a big, big giant circle of stars. And that works out really well. I think it works quite well with the amusement park theme. Now, overall, the Great Escape Collection is an outdoorsy camping theme. So you will see some words and phrases and things pop up that have more of like a nature kind of feel to them. But since all of these photos are outside, I thought I could get away with it anyway. 
and the stars really work for something celebratory like a state fair. And so I think that that worked out quite well. Now this little scallop piece I'm playing with under the photos was left over from a, a long strip of scallops and I have used the other colors. All I had left was this little bit of gray. And so I'm playing around with that, seeing if I can get it used under these photos, which it did work perfectly with some other little bits and pieces. Uh, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to use for a title, so I'm having a little bit of an audition period where I'm just grabbing bits and pieces from my embellishment tray, which is just a condiment tray from Amazon, nothing special, just plastic. And I have these all laid out so that I can quickly flip through the bits and pieces without having to open up packaging every single time I make a layout. And for me, I just find that so much easier to use and for the ADHD minds, it is really nice to have things visually available so you know what your options are. So I've got three strips behind my photo. Uh, two of them are from the manufacturing strips at the bottom of the pattern paper. One of them is pieces from an A5 scrap that I just cut off two pieces and tucked the ends behind the photo so you don't even know if you weren't watching this video, that those are actually two scrap pieces rather than one long piece. And then I'm using my lovely sticker sheet to pull off this play and this arrow. I actually think the play may have come from the cut apart sheet, but the arrow was definitely from the sticker sheet. And now we're going to go wild and do some gluing on of some tiny bits and pieces, some word phrases, finishing this layout off. One of the little details that I really like to add to word phrases is to cut a little fishtail into the end. That just makes them look a little bit more dynamic, especially when they are stacked on top of several other strips, like they are across the center of my background. Now I do like to create little shelves and little foundations for my photos and for my embellishments. So you will see me quite often do things like add these little strips behind the main photo if it's gonna be just floating in the air or creating a little shelf for it to sit on, which I've done a little bit of both of with this layout because you have those little scallops that kind of function as a bit of a shelf for support in my mind of that photo. And that is just something that visually works for the way my brain is creating. I like for there to be a base to build from for my photos. Just having them floating in the air without some sort of support in my head looks wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, you could just glue down some pictures in the middle of your paper, and it do doesn't really need support. But uh, for my brain, that just makes sense, and so I go with it. I'm also adding in some word phrases to the background, so a couple of the larger stars are getting some little word phrases added on. I've brought in some chipboard stars to add a little bit more interest closer to my photos. I'm going to put one on each side of the main photo in the center, because as you can see, all of the action right now, or most of the action right now, is in the busy stars building up our circle. And I want to make sure that that center photo is really what gets your focus. And by adding something that's a little bit more 3D, like these chipboard stars, that really helps to bring the focus in to that center photo and give it a little bit more attention. I'm also going to bring in some puffy stars and do the same thing there, add some detail around the outside, but also really focus on the center and balancing out the center. So what I do on the left side of the photo and the right side of the photo are going to be pretty similar, so they feel balanced. Same thing at the top of the page and the bottom of the page. I'm more or less creating a mirrored image with those photos at the top left and the photos at the bottom right. And I'm going to have a similar embellishment process to finishing off those clusters of photos. I am going to keep my embellishing overall fairly simple because all of those stars in the background are just going to compete with large clusters. So I don't really need to do that. Instead, I decided to make just small clusters using a word phrase and building off of the stars that already exist in the background so that I don't have to add still more. Want to keep this simple, want to blend in with the design that I've already created, and this was just the easiest way. Now, I am absolutely in love, enamored with these puffy stars. They're puffy stars and little circles, and the circles kind of have a look of planets to them. And I'm not sure if that was intended or not, but I love them. And so I've added several around the page, not only next to my center photo, but I'm going to dot them around the larger stars 
in the circular background because I want to break up a blocky feel. And for right now, my circle, even though it is a circle and not a block, it is kind of a perfect circle. And so I want to break it up with some little sprinkly bits that kind of change the look of it, give it more of a diagonal bounce to it with some smaller stars kind of just drifting around the outside and just inside the circle. You will see in a second how that helps to kind of break up that sort of blocky look to my circle. And I think that that happens when you use a lot of repetitive shapes in a row, even by changing up the color and size of those shapes, sometimes you can still sort of create a, a rectangular look and I try to soften that look with whimsical additions, like adding some little tiny circles and little tiny stars that have more dimension, that have that puffy shape to them that don't feel as flat. And those make such a difference in the background. I think you'll see that little sprinkling effect that adding those tiny details at the end really makes such a huge difference to the layout feeling complete. Now that I've finished my scattering, we'll jump into splattering. And as always, I'm doing two layers of splattering. I do a controlled splatter with the Nuvo Drops, this time with gold. And not only am I dotting them around my clusters, but I'm also popping into the centers of some of the larger stars, just to give them a little bit more detail and interest. And then I'll come in with some little bit more of the tiny little fussy cut stars, because again, I wanted to add more of these little sprinkly bits around the outside to make it a little bit more whimsical feeling because we are at the fair. And when I think of going to the fair, having all of those amusement park type rides, it's a very whimsical place. And so I wanted more of a whimsical and emotion like feel, kind of like you're on the Ferris wheel, if you will. Nothing is staying still. We're going around in emotion. Finishing it off with the Nuvo, gonna bring in some gold ink splatter to just kind of add a little bit of fun around the outside. This is an uncontrolled splatter that I add to finish up the layout, and then it will be just about complete. Now this is where I thought I was going to say, it's done and let's move on. But then I decided it needed a border. Now I don't do this as often as I used to, but this layout being on a white background and it felt very floaty, I thought it needed a little bit more structure to rein it in. So a very simple sketchy background uh, using a T-square ruler can add a nice straight line all the way around, give it a bit of a barrier to rein everything in, add a little bit more control, a little bit more a linear structure to the background. And for me, this made such a big difference. Now, as I do usually do, I am going to go ahead and outline the strips of paper here in the background, give them a slight shadow, and that gives them a more of a 3D look, but it also helps to bring your attention to the center and not to the stars. It'll make those pop out a little bit from the background. I'm gonna do the same thing to all of my photos and to the journaling spot again, because those are where I really want your focus to be. And by giving them that little bit of a shadow from the outlining, it really helps them pop off of this white background. So that is my tip for today using that outlining process to uh, highlight the areas you want people to pay the most of attention to does work. It really helps a lot to bring the attention in where you want it to be and adding to all of my photos because those are what I want to stand out to you first. Now, be sure to check out the Coco Vanilla blog for more lovely ideas as the girls over there are always sharing so many brilliant ideas. And that is cocovanilla.com.au. That's it for me. Until next time. Bye, y'all.